All right, guys, so on today's field tips, we're gonna talk a little bit about floorless shelters, and I'm gonna show you how I set up the Seek Outside eight-man teepee. So stick around. All right, so before we get into the pluses and minuses of floorless shelters, I'm just gonna show you how I set this thing up. Now, um, this is the eight-man TP, and one of the things that you're gonna need to consider is how big this thing is. The foot footprint on this TP is over 14 feet, so you need a pretty good size space um, to set it up. Now, I use a method um, where I just use the radius, and I use the center pole as a measuring stick. And what that allows you to do is get it right the first time every time. You don't really have to spend a lot of time pulling stakes and resetting things uh, like you do with some of the other methods. So what I'm gonna do is set this pole up so that, this is, and this is the aluminum pole. I'm gonna set this pole up so that there's one hole between the two pins that holds this thing together. Now this is the adjusting piece so you can adjust it up and down. And it just so happens for the eight man that that is the exact length that you need for your radius so you can set your stakes around. Now, if you're working with one of the other tents, um, that's probably not gonna work, but all you've gotta do is get on Seek Outside's website, figure out what the radius is for the tent, and then take your center pole and just measure from one end to the other, put you a mark on it, and then that's gonna be your radius where you set your stakes. All right, so now that I've got the pole set up, you're gonna have to figure out where you want the center of your tent and where you want your doors. Those are the two things that you need to have figured out before you start this, this process. Now, um, just looking around at the lay of the ground, I've got some irregularities. I'm gonna put the center about right here. So I'm gonna throw one stake in the ground right there. Now what I'm gonna do is figure out where I want my door. So the campfire is gonna be over there, so I want one door facing that. So what I'm gonna do is take my pole, put right on that center stake, and come directly opposite of where I want my front door, because the doors on this thing are opposite each other. And I'm gonna take a stake and I'm gonna put right at the end of this thing, kind of an, at an, a little bit of an angle going in. Now I'm gonna come opposite that stake. Again, I'm just gonna put the pole right up against that and just make a line so that everything lines up. And again, I'm gonna put another stake at an angle right there. So now that I've got, I've got these three stakes in a row, I'm going to unfold this tent. And one of the doors, I'm going to come and put on this stake. The other door, I'm going to put on this stake. I really need to get a rock and pound those in a little bit better. Now I'm going to find the opposite or the uh, whatever loop splits those in half, whichever is halfway in between. So it's gonna be this one. And again, I'm gonna take my pole and stick it right on that center peg that we put 
Whoops. And I'm just gonna use the tension of the tent to get this even. Now, I'm just gonna move that pole over so that everything's good. And again, I'm gonna put a stake right at the end of this pole. Come to the other side and do the same thing. Again, just, uh, you know, make sure your tension is right. You know, move it back and forth until you've got the tension about right on each side. And again, put your stake right at the end of that pole. All right, so now that we've got a perfect square here, we've got the four corners. I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up. Step inside and just go ahead and lift the center up. So now the rest of them you can just do by feel. Just go ahead and pull them so that they're snug but not super tight. All right, so now that we've got everything uh, staked all around the, the, the TP set up. I'm going to go ahead and tie these sides out so that I have a lot more livable space because right here I mean there's probably 16 or 18 inches from the edge in where you really don't have a lot of room as far as height goes and so I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple of stakes and come out from the seam here something like this Now, instead of just taking this and tying it straight down here, I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and take a stick and put it right up next to the teepee, and it helps if you have a fork in it. And what that does is instead of just pulling it down, it pulls it up and out. So that gives you a lot more room close to the edge of this teepee. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie not sure what this knot is, but it's a, an adjustable tent knot. It's almost like a half of a prussic knot. You can slide it up and down, it just locks itself in place. And these you can adjust. So now you've got livable space almost right up to the, the perimeter of this, this tent. There you go. Now you can take, take your, your gear or your sleeping pad or whatever and put way over to this side so that you have the whole interior of the TP uh, free so you're not stepping on each other. So now you've got a lot more livable space over here. You can definitely put a, a sleeping pad or store gear over along the edge here. Whereas if you didn't lift those up, you wouldn't have near the space that you have right now.
Now, one of the great things about these teepees is they do have two doors. So uh, when it's warm like this, you can open up both sides and have a nice breeze through this thing. They've also got bug netting, um, which I've got tied, uh, tied back here so it's out of the way. But get a nice uh, breeze blowing through this thing. Um, when it's sunny like this, thing, like it is right now, these things um, are kind of like greenhouses. I mean, like any tent, uh, if you get sun beating down on it and you don't have any ventilation, it's just gonna get hot in there. Now, uh, one thing I will mention real quick, I'm gonna set the stove up here in just a second. But uh, one of the downsides of floorless shelters is condensation now it's um middle of september elk season here right now and we're in a pretty arid area and so condensation's not an issue at all here but um let's say you're out bear hunting or something in the springtime and you set this teepee up on in a lush meadow well when the sun comes up it's going to heat up the inside of that tent and it's going to cause that grass to start losing moisture and it's going to be a sauna inside this thing and so um, there's a couple of things that you can do to help mitigate for that. One of them is uh, just the location where you set it up. Uh, if you can set it up in the shade, it's gonna help. If you can find um, somewhere where there's not a bunch of lush grass, uh, you know, if you set it up on, on really green grass, you're just asking for condensation. Uh, but they also make a liner that goes in this thing and what that does is allows the condensation to form on the inside of the wall but then it just runs down between the liner and the tent itself and so it runs down to the edge and it's it's not a problem now i've had this thing out um, when condensation's been a, a big issue <clears throat> and the only time that it ever causes a problem is when you have a wind because when you have a wind that shakes this tent that condensation will drip down onto you and on whatever's in the tent. But normally what happens if it's calm is the condensation forms and it just runs down the inside of the tent around um, the perimeter anyway. So it's not usually a, tr a problem. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up the, uh, the stove here. All right, so when you first get this stove, this stove pipe is gonna be kind of a pain to get set up. It really helps if you have two or even three people to get it uh, curled the right way because when you first get this thing, it's brand new, it's gonna be curled this way and it's gonna be difficult to get it in the pipe uh, form. But once you have it set up the first time and you get it burn in, you light a fire in it and get this thing hot, it's gonna shape to its new form and uh, it's very easy. You can set it up basically with one hand after you burn it in. But that first time, get somebody to help you. So uh, this comes with these little um, cable rings. Now all you do, is just put these on the end and kind of distribute them evenly up and down this and that's what keeps this stovepipe together. All right, so now your little damper here. I put the damper on the, uh, the inside of the stovepipe 
because it seems the damper seems to work a little bit better. So put it on the inside and then take one of these one of these rings and slide it down and that'll help hold it in place, keep everything tight. All right, we'll set that aside. Now, the, uh, the way that this thing is held together is with these little pieces of all thread and they've got wing nuts and then little metal stoppers. And I'm just gonna take these stoppers and set them right here on the on the door so I don't lose them. Now after you set this thing up a cup a, a, the first time really you're gonna know where your wing nuts need to be. Now it doesn't matter you could have the stoppers you could have these little stoppers down here at the bottom or the wing nuts whatever I have the wing nuts on the bottom but you'll need you'll you'll know where about where they need to be where the bottom of the um, stove is gonna sit and have the right height. That'll make sense here in just a second. Now, this stove is beat up. I've had this thing on pack animals, horses, goats. I've had it in backpacks, beaten around in the back of the truck, um, and it still works great. Now, the, the sides uh, have these little folds in them, and the front and the back have these little uh, ribs that fit down in the folds. So all you gotta do is slip them right down in those little folds. All right, so now that the front and back and the sides are assembled, just gonna take the bottom, I'm gonna set it right in there, and these little holes down here <clears throat> go towards the bottom, and then the top with the stove jack hole here, I'm gonna put that towards the back of the stove. And now it's assembled, you just need to put the all thread through it. Now it helps if you just kinda hold things together with your knees. Take this all thread, feed through there and then take one of your, your wing nuts or your stoppers and just tighten everything up with the wing nut. Now you don't want to get things, you don't want to crush the stove, tighten it up too much, but you want to get it oops, tight enough so that it holds together. Now you just put the put the door in there. And it's ready to go in the tent. Now I, sh I should have mentioned that before you put the tent up, if you're going to use the stove, you need to undo the uh, the Velcro that holds the flap over the stovepipe hole. So you want to be careful inside the tent because this does have a sharp edge on it and you could cut this fabric if you're not careful um, with the stove pipe. Just put that right through there. Now, um, this is pretty close to the, uh, the center pole here, and this stove can get very, very hot. It gets cherry red, and this whole thing here will get red. And so just move it away. You can, if you need to, you can shift your pole over a little bit and get plenty of space between the stove and the pole. You don't want any kind of gear or anything like that around this thing. You don't want any dried grass underneath it because you will catch, I mean, if there's dried grass down here, you will catch it on fire. Um, so just be sure of that. Now, I mean, this thing, this is the eight man and it's huge. Uh, like I said, the footprint's about 14 feet. 
I've had up to four guys and all their gear in here on a 10 day backcountry trip. Now, four guys and all their gear is about as much as I would want to go. Um, it starts getting a little bit crowded after that. It's actually a little bit crowded with four guys. Um, three guys with the stove and everything is very, very doable. Um, four guys, you're kind of stepping over each other a little bit. Um, two guys, it's like you got all the room in the world uh, in this thing, uh, especially if you tie the edges out like that. Now, the, the great thing about these tents is they're, first, they're extremely versatile. They're very, very light. Um, I'm not sure what this weighs uh, with, the, with the stove, the tent and everything, but if you got on the Seek Outside website, uh, they're gonna have all the specs for these tents. Um, you know, if you're, this is gonna be way overkill if you're just backpacking by yourself, but certainly if you're with a couple of guys back on a backpack trip, uh, you could split up gear and all you'd need is one shelter. So one guy could carry the shelter, the pole, stove, everything, and a, couple, and a little bit more, um, and then just distribute things um, amongst yourselves. The, having the stove in this tent on late season uh, hunts is an absolute game changer. When you can uh, get a fire going, put coffee on, and heat this tent up without ever getting out of your sleeping bag, that is pretty amazing when it's you know close to zero or sub-zero outside and you can get this tent to 70 degrees inside that, that's pretty nice now this little stove is not going to hold a fire for a long time it's very thin walled the, the tent is not going to hold heat but as long as you've got a fire going in this firebox you can get this tent very very warm i had it out on a late season hunt a couple of years ago where it was 13 below and uh, you could walk around in this thing in your underwear uh, if you wanted to when it was that cold outside. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this week's video. If you have any questions about the tents, the stove, or anything that I use, any of my equipment that I use for backcountry hunting, just shoot me an email or uh, get in contact with the guys at Seek Outside. They can help you with any questions that you might have. Um, but uh, I'd like to thank all the guys that are signed up at Patreon that helped to bring these videos to everybody. And if you, are, uh, want, if you want to uh, get some exclusive content, some stuff that you're never going to see anywhere else, go to patreon.com forward slash Clayhays and check it out. There's different levels of membership or different levels of access, different levels of um, uh, interaction and things like that. But anyway, go check it out. Uh, maybe you'll find something that you like. Uh, but with that, it is elk season and I need to be hunting. So we'll see you next time.